Coming up on 5-Minute News. U.S. missionaries kidnapped in Haiti. Tens of thousands demonstrate in Rome against neo-fascists. And heavy rains and landslides leave 18 dead in South India. It's Monday, October 18. I'm Anthony Davis. A notorious Haitian gang known for brazen kidnappings and killings was accused by police on Sunday of abducting 17 missionaries from a US-based organization. Five children were believed to be among those kidnapped, including a two-year-old. The 400 Mawozo gang kidnapped the group in Ganthia, a community that lies east of the capital of Port-au-Prince, Haitian police inspector Franz Champagne said. The gang was blamed for kidnapping five priests and two nuns earlier this year in Haiti. Ohio-based Christian Aid Ministries said the kidnapped group consisted of 16 U.S. citizens and one Canadian, for a total of five children, seven women and five men. The organization said they were on a trip to visit an orphanage. Haiti is once again struggling with a spike in gang-related kidnappings that had diminished in recent months after President Jovenel Moise was fatally shot at his private residence on July 7 and a 7.2 magnitude earthquake killed more than 202,000 people in August. The missionary group offers Bible classes, runs a medical clinic, helps orphans, and distributes seeds to farmers, among other efforts in Haiti, according to its annual report. The report for last year said that American staff had returned to their base in Haiti after a nine-month absence due to political unrest and noted the uncertainty and difficulties that arise from such instability. A senior U.S. official said the United States is in touch with Haitian authorities to try to resolve the case. Tens of thousands of union members and other Italians gathered in Rome to stand up against rising fascism a week after right-wing extremists forced their way into the headquarters of Italy's most powerful labor confederation while protesting a COVID-19 certification requirement for workplaces. The head of the CGIL Union Confederation, Maurizio Landini, led the protest with other Labour leaders under the slogan, Never Again Fascism. Organisers put the crowd assembled in front of Sir John Lateran Basilica for the protest at 100,000 strong. Some participants waved flags reading CVAX, a direct retort to the protesters armed with sticks and metal bars who trashed CGIL's Rome headquarters on October 9. They were protesting a government requirement which took effect on Friday mandating proof of vaccination, a negative test within 48 hours, or proof of having recovered from COVID-19 to access places of employment. Landini, CGIL's secretary-general, has compared the assault on the union headquarters to 1921 attacks by the newly founded fascist party against union organisers. Fascist leader Benito Mussolini came to power the next year and later brought Italy into World War II as an ally of Nazi Germany. Landini said Saturday's event was intended as a demonstration that defends democracy for everyone. The head of the Italian General Confederation of Labour Trade Union, Luigi Sabara, said an attack against unions led by the far-right Forza Nuova party made the only choice to be here united against all types of fascism. He called for the swift dissolution of the party by Italian authorities. At least 18 people have died a day after torrential rains swept through villages and flooded roads in the southern Indian state of Kerala. Officials said rescuers recovered the bodies in two of the worst hit districts, Kottayam and Iduki, where the heavy downpours triggered massive landslides, according to the Press Trust of India. The National Disaster Response Force and the Indian Army deployed teams to help with rescue efforts, as several are still feared to be missing. On Saturday, when the heavy rains began, television reports showed people wading through chest-deep waters to rescue passengers from a bus that was nearly submerged by the torrents flooding the roads. 
The state chief minister urged residents on Sunday to exercise extreme caution, even though the intense rainfall has since subsided. Over a hundred relief camps have been set up, he said. Prime Minister Narendra Modi said he spoke to the chief minister and added that authorities were working to rescue those affected. I pray for everyone's safety and well-being, he said in a tweet. In 2018, Kerala suffered catastrophic floods when heavy downpours amid the monsoon season killed 223 people and drove hundreds of thousands from their homes. With the onset of climate change, extreme weather events will continue around the world unless countries meet their carbon emission requirements as set by the 2015 Paris Agreement. You can subscribe to 5-Minute News on YouTube with your preferred podcast app. Ask your smart speaker or enable 5-Minute News as your Amazon Alexa flash briefing skill. Subscribe, rate and review online at 5minute.news. 5-Minute News is an evergreen podcast covering politics, inequality, health and climate, delivering independent, unbiased and essential world news daily.